Hello YouTube, Paramecium914 here, and we are back. Uh, here we're um, actually doing some more online battles today with Lionheart. Um, uh, I was, if you remember, I back uh, way back in November, I think I I fought a online battle with him, had a lot of fun with it, and um, you guys on YouTube seemed to like it. It was one of my uh, the most popular videos I did, so I thought since I had fun and everyone liked it, I might as well try to do it again. So I contacted Lionheart, and he uh, graciously ex um, uh, agreed to fight a couple battles with me. So here I am. I decided to play as the Seleucids. Um, I've been playing just by myself a campaign with the Seleucids, and I was really impressed just by their um, some of their unit diversity. And uh, they just seem to have pretty much all around everything, uh, more or less, in the way of uh, different types of units. Um... So yeah, um, I did. I I thought I'd put some elephants in and um, some uh, royal peltists, which I I assumed the royal peltists were um, predominantly like skirmisher missile units that could also kind of fight in melee. But that wasn't the case. They were more the the from what I can gather or now at least uh, they uh, they fight more like legionaries, where if you charge them in, they'll throw their spears. But other than that, they're just mostly melee troops. Um, they they can even form shield wall. So, um, and uh, I I threw in a little bit of cavalry because um, I assumed that I'd need it because in my last battle I was kind of swamped by uh, Lionheart's cavalry, but in this battle, um, I like I, I gave myself a little bit to kind of counteract his, but I didn't give myself that much. And uh, they kind of hurt me a little bit later. And also, I didn't recruit very many spear spearmen, which are obviously the way to counteract cavalry. And I completely forgot to give myself artillery, which I meant to do. So, um, yeah, I. Well, you, you'll see. You'll see how that turns out for me in a bit. But he's playing as uh, Bactria, which uh, is a. Uh, Pretty cool um, faction. I've ever, I've never actually um, played as the Bactrians, but um, they they do have some pretty, pretty good units. And uh, as you can see, the battle we're fighting on this time, there's no ocean, so I I didn't have the option to recruit um, like boat units, which I probably should have done in the last battle I had with them back in November. So here we are in the battlefield, and me with all my infantry. So. Here, here I'm just forming up my guys, and uh, I think I end up putting my uh, peltists in front, and uh, my spearmen, or my uh, swordsmen, my, I guess, thorax swordsmen, or maybe they're silver shields, I don't quite remember, but, um, yeah, they're silver shields, okay. Uh, silver shield swordsmen, I put them kind of there, and I put my spearmen on the flanks to kind of ward off any cavalry attacks and um, then I put my peltists in front my royal peltists and I also I do get a unit of regular peltasts which are skirmisher units and um, yeah so put them in front and let's see what else do I do uh, yeah so I, I put my elephants on the flanks and uh, I got some camel spearmen because um, in the campaign I was just really impressed with the charge bonus that camels get. And, like uh, there would just be instances where my camels would just completely charge over an entire unit. So, and I, I, here I decided that I didn't really want my general out on my flank, so I put him back kind of behind my guys, but still to the left so that they could do some good. And so here I'm just. I, I just I'm noticing that my um, my peltus can form shield wall, and um, here I'm noticing that he has a lot of cavalry, and um, it immediately dawned on me that my army was not very mobile and would have a really hard time trying to chase these cavalry down, um, especially since I had so little cavalry. Like he only has like three units of infantry, and they're all spearmen, so. And of course, he has some elephants and uh, some more cavalry. So, um, I decided that the best thing for me to do in this situation is just to kind of turtle up, 
like uh, put my spearmen on my flanks to kind of prevent them from flank attacking me, and um, just kind of forming some shield walls and just kind of turtling up a bit so that he can't outflank with me, me with his cavalry, and that even though he can ride around me, because I know that my cavalry is not going to be able to win against his because he just has more. So, um, decided to turtle up a bit, uh, and uh, hope that I can kind of coax him into charging me and, um, losing his cavalry on my, uh, spears and on my shield wall. And, um, I'm, I'm, I still don't realize that, um, my royal peltists aren't great skirmisher units. I mean, my peltists are, but I only have one unit of them. So I'm kind of hoping that I can shoot them, shoot his cavalry down for a distance as they're kind of circling around me. Um, and, and there is a little bit of that later on, you'll see. But um, as you can see, he's uh, sur surrounding me, which I kind of assumed that he would because he has cavalry. And that's kind of what you do when you have a lot of cavalry against a small group of infantry. You surround them, and try to get flank attacks on them, maybe with some hammer and anvil strikes. Uh, so yeah, here I'm just forming my guys up in like a little bit of a turtle formation with my guys all facing outwards. And there they are. I, I notice him shooting at my elephants, which I, I don't really like. I kind of I want to keep my elephants. So I charge my camel warriors in. And then uh, I notice that his elephants are coming. So I pull my camel spearman back a little bit of lag there but um so I decided that would be a good idea to just send my elephants in and try to counteract his elephants um pro that probably wasn't the best thing I could have done at that point but um cause see now he's sending all his cavalry in with uh, fire arrows and um uh, as you probably know, fire arrows are not, they, they're not very good for the elephants. Like they, elephants don't like it. Start running amok. And pretty quickly I just lose my camel archers. Like I wasn't paying too close attention and they just. But um, I, I know, I'm pretty sure that at this point I'm not going to win the battle, the elephant battle or the cavalry battle just because fire arrows and he just has so much cavalry and really not much I can do about that so my best hope is to just turtle up and um, kinda just try to hold out against his cavalry don't, don't let them separate my troops by chasing them down and um, I am a little bit worried about his elephants because they can still charge like right through my formation because I mean they're elephants and Elephants are, I would imagine, are especially effective against, like, shield walls and, like, dense formations that they can just walk through. So I keep my uh, general's elephant unit in reserve. And um, I, I guess I do try to get them to use their missiles against the enemy cavalry. And uh, th they are charging my elephants, so there's not a lot, whole lot I can do there. And th they're shooting fire arrows, and already they're running amok. So... Fortunately, they do run amuck right into his cavalry, which takes out a few of them, but not quite enough. So, I have my peltists there in their formation, and um, I think I decide that my uh, spearmen are too far out, and so and my peltists are in the um, on the wrong side of the formation. So I kind of shift them around a bit, and my elephants are just kind of running amuck there. Uh, I can still use the intimidate thing, so I do that. And try to, I guess, intimidate his troops. I don't think it worked too well, but um. And uh, my elephants are still running around, and they're being shot at. My guys are still kind of turtled up, just trying to hold out as long as possible. And uh, a little bit more lag here. I was a bit worried about that, but didn't it didn't continue to be a consistent problem. Um, and there, his elephants are fighting my elephants, and uh, my elephants start running amok in my formation, as you can kind of see there. Um,
which it, I don't think it in um in Rome two for some reason it doesn't actually kill your guys when they do that, but it does disrupt the formation. Like in uh, medieval two, I remember um sometimes like the um timurids like when they were attacking a castle, like um sometimes like they 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 wouldn't just wait for a, out for a siege they would just attack you um because like the the elephants have cannons on them <laughs> so um the map ai would think that they could just like escalade like take the so here you see me uh shooting some of his cavalry but the the map ai would think that um they could take out the um enemy ca or your castle just by like attacking it without building any siege equipment because um, like the elephants and cannons, but then the um, the uh, battle AI was completely unaware that you could do that. So they would just walk all their troops up and just kind of sit them in front of your gate, where of course like fire arrows would shoot at the elephants, and the elephants would run amok. And there were several instances where I just killed the entire army because they were on this column formation, and, like the elephants would just run a muck back through the enemy column and kill them all and I would win the battle that way. It was probably a pretty cheap victory, but um but yeah, there's none of that in Rome too. Like they just disrupt their formation. They don't completely massacre your troops cuz if they did, I'd be in a bad way here cuz they're just running a muck through my shield walls and that's no good. They do knock some guys over. Um I don't know, maybe they do kill some guys. Maybe they do, because... Hmm. I'm not sure about that, actually. It, it looks it looks from this footage like they are actually killing a few of my own dudes. But either way, it's not good. And, um... The, his elephants, like, which I guess are more heavily armored than mine, are just causing havoc with my formation. Um, and then he has his missile cavalry, which are just pelt pelting my guys. I'm just in a bad way in general. Um, yeah, it's just not a good situation for me. Uh, I, I just had too much infantry and to counteract his, like, massive amounts of cavalry and elephants. So he, his army was well suited to, well equipped to take out my army. And, um... I, I don't last too much longer after this, so it was well, very well played on his part. Um, here, my guys are like these are my spearmen, and uh, they they are taking down a few of his cavalry, but it's just not quite enough. Not enough. This is a shameful display. And there you see one of my units route. And uh, the rest will follow shortly. And um, this battle did not go very well for me. And here I am um, just wishing him a good game because I, I know that it's over. Um, just running, running havoc through all my troops. And there goes my last unit. And so the battle is over. He did agree to um, rematch me, though, this time, which um, which was nice. And uh, so I kind of I tried to learn from this battle. And um, I believe I, yeah, I played as the Scythians this time, which if you know from my Let's Plays, uh, which uh, if you guys haven't already, you should check out. Um, but... Um, I, I I was uh, playing. I'm I'm playing as the Scythians in my Let's Play. If you weren't aware already, and um, so while I'm not probably the best with um playing as the Scythians and on battles, um, like I I I did know a thing or two about the units, so I was more fami familiar with the units, and uh, this time I do remember to give myself artillery, which is for some reason it's the only. Um, foot not mounted unit that you can recruit in multiplayer battles, which is weird because in the campaign you can recruit young axes and at least gives you some infantry, but um, in multiplayer you, you don't have that option. Um, but yeah, so I, I recruit some lancers and uh, some noble horse archers 
Uh, and uh, here I'm deciding whether or not it would be more economical to recruit more noble horse archers or uh, more armored horse archers. And, and I, I think I'd decide that the lower, slightly lower tier ones would be better just because I could get a few more of them. Because these guys do run out of ammo kind of fast. And uh, so does the artillery, actually. Like, it's actually a little bit odd, I think, how little art ammunition the artillery has. But, I, I mean, I guess it's to balance it out, because artillery is really effective in Rome, too. Like, more effective than I think it was in, like, Empire. Or, um... It, definitely much more effective than it was in the original Rome, in which artillery was pretty, more or less useless on the battlefield. I mean, you could, maybe in a bridge battle in the original Rome, you could you could do some damage with artillery. But other than that, its uses were pretty much limited to uh, fighting... Uh, like taking down enemy walls. So, okay, while we wait for um, the battle to load up, I think I'm going to cut away to the microorganism shout-out. So I'll see you back in a few minutes. Hey, guys, and welcome to the microorganism shout-out. We have something a little bit different today. We have uh, Cairnohaptitis elegans. Um... If you remember, like, if, if any of you are, like, Spongebob fans, you may remember that uh, there were a couple episodes in which nematodes um, were featured, and one of which uh, they came and they ate everything, including Spongebob's house. But, um, yeah, so, uh, Gernohabditus elegans, uh, it's a common nematode uh, found in the soil. Um, yeah, so it's a first for us because we've never actually done a multicellular animal before. Everything up to now has been either bacterial or free-living eukaryotes. Or sometimes may, I may have done a few colonial eukaryotes, but this is the first um, animal that I've done. So that's, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, we'll start off with the taxonomy. I mean, you can see it right there, but it's, uh, it's in the phylum nematoda. So it, it's a round worm. Uh, it's in the class uh, Chromodoria, the order Rabdita. Rabdita? Rabdita? And the family it rubbed it today, so um, it's uh, one one thing key feature about uh, roundworms in general. This is not just uh, um, C. elegans. It's um, they're bilaterally symmetrical, which is uh, it, that, that's an important development in uh, um, evolutionary biology uh, for anything really. Uh, they go up to about one millimeter in length, so I guess theoretically you could see them with the naked eye. Um, I mean, I've seen these guys under microscopes. I've, I've never seen them quite that big. But um, I guess if you squinted your eyes hard enough, you might be able to see see one. Um, they have tubular digestive tracts. So if you think of flatworms, like with planarians, if you don't know what planarian is, um, maybe I'll give a shout out to it at some point. But they're like, you, you can find, you go to a river, lift, lift up a rock. They're these little tiny, slimy, worm like things that live underneath them. But, um, yeah, so, uh, planarians, they have like a, it's like a one way digested tract that goes in and out the same way. But, um, with roundworms, like C. elegans, um, it, it's like, it's like us. Like we, it goes, the food goes in one way, it comes out the other. So it has a tubular, a tubular digestive tract. Uh, and most are hermaphrodite females, uh, as true males are very rare. I think it's like one in a thousand in nature or something like that. And uh, the females lay eggs, which then um, hatch, and they go through several um, larval stages. And actually, when they, they're under a great deal of stress, they can uh, go into a special larval stage in which they won't grow any further to kind of protect themselves. So, um, and uh, the females, since most of them are hermaphrodite females, they do um, self-fertilize most of the time. Uh, they, they, uh, they do exchange genetic information with a form of conjugation, which obviously is a bit different than it would be in like a paramecium or something, but... There is um, some sexual interaction going on there, but um, they, for the actual um, reproduction, they do usually just self-fertilize, lay eggs. Um, they live in temperate soil, and uh, they feed mostly on uh, bacteria. They'll feed on pretty much anything they can get their hands on, really. Um, yeah, I mean, pretty they're pretty important to the ecosystem that way, like soil health. Um 
it's a common it's a really common model organism in labs and i mean a really common one um it was the first multicellular organism to have its entire genome sequence like you hear about the human genome project well there was a c elegans genome project at some point too which its entire genome was sequenced and uh it's had it's had its entire connectome map so basically what that is it's um it's neural networks like you um i think it might be the only multicellular organism to have its entire connectome map like the connection between the synapses like if you imagine like humans that would be like mostly our brain and like our nerves and everything like we don't even have ours mapped yet so i mean theirs is obviously a lot simpler um and i mean yeah it, it was used in, uh it's is still used in several like just various research experience um experiments uh i think there was some space research done on them to see how well they would survive in space and uh like a bunch of genetic drift experiments and like all all sorts of stuff so it's a really important species in that regard um but yeah that's carano habditus elegans uh I hope you guys found this one interesting. Remember, you can always suggest a uh, microorganism for me to give a shout out to, and I'll be happy to look into it. So, uh, thank you for watching, and now let's get back to uh, the online battles. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're here in the battlefield. Um, yeah, for those of you who are, I guess, new to my channel or just wondering, like, in general, like, why I do the microorganism shout out. Well, um, I, I went over this a little bit in one of my earlier videos, but, um, well, first of all, I am a biology student. I'm currently studying biology and I hope to like specialize as a microbiologist. Um, so th that, that's one thing. Another thing is I, I just think they're cool. Um, Especially the protists, like the eukary single celled eukaryotes. Um, like I honestly, like I, I've done a lot of work with them. Like in like um, back in high school, I did a bunch of work with Paramecium in like the science fair, and uh, just um, I, I just think that like just looking at them under the microscope, like they're so like. Um, they're so cool and yet we know so little about them because we can't see them and so uh I, I, it's just something that i know a bit about and like i enjoy talking about it but also like my philosophy behind this whole channel in general is just um like i do gaming but i also like i try to teach you something that hopefully you'll be interested in like just the little fun facts um but yeah it's, it's just um something i like doing and uh, i hope that i can like it's informative and it can like i don't know maybe get someone else interested in microbiology or science in general so like th that's just kind of why i do it and um yeah i mean i enjoy doing it so here we are i like i obviously have a lot more cavalry like it's pretty much all i have besides the artillery and uh he i guess he anticipated that um i would have a lot of cavalry because because he saw that i was a Scythian's. Um, so he has a lot of pikemen, which are which are very effective against cavalry charges, but not so effective against missile cavalry. Which the Scythians are kind of um, good, like that's their uh, strong point. And so you, you can see that my artillery accidentally hitting some of my own guys. I was a bit a bit pissed off about that, to be honest. Like um, like it, mostly at. at not not so much at like uh Lionheart or anything, but just like at my artillery. I'm like, what well, can't you shoot at like someone else? But I I guess it was my fault for leaving them on auto fire. So I get some good hits there. And like I'm just here I'm just doing what the Scythians do best. Like, um skirmishing, like just shoot like not engaging in melee, just shooting his um cavalry from a distance and just picking them off before they can do anything. And um, th this go this actually goes on for quite a while. Um, yeah, here he, he I think he was moving his troops over the side, maybe to move his troops out of range of my artillery, because um, like I said, artillery is very effective in this game. Um, so here I am moving, charging my uh, my melee cavalry up to engage his melee cavalry, so that won't get in to my uh, ballistas. Because if you remember from my first battle with Lionheart. 
he snuck his cavalry around and completely decimated my um, my ballistas, so I wasn't able to use them. But um, his uh, companion cavalry is actually fairly resistant to my um, arrows, so I decided that would be a good idea to put my guys on heavy shot, maybe do a little bit more damage. And I think that probably helped a little bit. Um, here I am just deploying my troops around. And... Let's see, I'm... I'm picking off those companion cavalry pretty well. They're, they're starting to rout. And uh, I have my lancer cavalry, which I, I think I probably charged in a little bit prematurely. I probably could have just saved them and used them a lot more effectively later. But, I mean... Oh well. <laughs> And I just from running my cavalry around so much, I think by the end of the battle, I think they just got tired eventually. So here I am uh, moving them out, trying to keep them from going to melee. Because once they get to the edge of the map, they will get trapped there, and their uh, skirmish mode command won't work. It, I mean, it doesn't work too well to begin with, but um, the men are wavering. So I'm, but fortunately, they don't take too many casualties. I managed to pull them out. And there's uh, that Roman dude telling me that my men are wavering, which I, of course, needed to know. Um, and so I, I I was moving my artillery up to kind of try to get them more in range of his troops, but then he started moving his up, so I didn't really need to anymore. I'm just moving my cavalry up there to uh, protect my ballistas. And here I'm... Uh, skirmishing more with his cavalry, which he, he did bring a fair amount of, but I mean my whole army was cavalry, so he just didn't have enough to counteract mine so it was a little bit of a reverse of the last battle almost in, in that regard and there my um, Ballista sent some of his uh, phalanx pikemen flying and he sends his um, skirmisher troops really far up front and uh, they're pretty easy pickings for my lancers, which were protecting my ballistas. So um, I am I do get a bit worried that maybe some of those projectiles will hit my own men there. They're getting mighty close, so I move them away. Fortunately, skirmisher troops don't stand up very long against cavalry. So, and there you can see I'm getting some pretty good hits against his um, his uh, foot troops. Like, I'm, I'm causing some pretty major damage there. And, um... There he's charging my uh, ballistas with his cavalry, and so I, I fortunately have a spare unit of lancers right there. They can move up. I think they do get into my ballistas a little bit, but, um... And also my, uh... <laughs> I just tried to point out my monitor with my hand. But, um... I do have some uh, missile cavalry pelting them from the back. And then I try to get them to charge in so they'll stop shooting and maybe hitting my own guys, which would be bad. And so here, I'm just trying to keep my guys out of the fight, like out of the melee, like keep them skirmishing, doing what they do best, whittling down his forces. Which, if you'll notice, like I have whittled his forces down quite considerably by this point. So, and here we have... um his troops advancing on my ballistas again, but fortunately they're not pikemen. They're, I think they're uh, shield bearers, so they don't decimate my cavalry when I charge them in to protect my um, my ballistas. If, if they were like pikemen advancing on my ballistas, then I mean, um, not much I could really do about that directly. I might be able to try some flank charges, but uh, I mean, there's really not much I could do to stop them. But um, it didn't really end up not mattering too much because my at this point my ballistas um, had already run out of ammunition. Um, and uh, here they're bringing up he's bringing up some pikemen. I realize I have to get my uh, cavalry out of there. So um, now I was watching a, a while ago back when the game first came out. I was watching some of the uh, demos on um, like pikemen, like some of the test battles that they, uh, Sega was releasing. And like in some of those that footage, like um, if you charge like um, pike formations, like from the back, 
like it would just like completely crush the formation but um here in the multiplayer battles it it seemed to be a little bit less effective so i don't know if they tweaked that or it's just different in multiplayer or what but um it, it wasn't quite having the same effects that i had hoped it would i mean part of it might be that a lot of my guys are like predominantly missile cavalry and not melee troops so that might have something to do with it and so here um or there um I was, uh, like, my ballistas were out of ammunition, so they were of no more use to me, so I just decided to charge them in, hope they do some good. Uh, I think they actually may have done a little bit of good. Um, but, I mean, obviously in a campaign battle, you wouldn't do that. You'd want to save your artillery for another day, but, I mean, this is just a single battle. So, um, uh, I had no more use for them than to just charge them in, so... And here I'm bringing this cow, this uh, like actual melee cavalry, and try to charge them like on the flank. And uh, I carefully time the trample ability. And so here, a good example of what I was talking about. They don't really cripple the formation that much. I mean, they kind of get in into the formation, but it, it's like not like guys flying everywhere like that you kind of expect from like a total war game. It's, like like a flank attack on with uh, lance or cavalry it's just kind of they just kind of ride through them and uh, I, I, and to hear these guys I, I almost accidentally I, actually I did lose a few guys because uh, um, they had run out of ammunition and yeah this is where my archers like are, they're starting to run out of ammunition I mean like like when they have their ammunition they're really good against pikemen because pikemen are slow especially when they're in formation and so they're really vulnerable to missile cavalry once they run out of um, ammunition like arrows then there's really not much they can do except like maybe like try to get around like and do some flank attacks and as you just saw like his um, pike unit that I charged uh, um, I think that's his pike unit maybe it's a shield bearers but they didn't quite route I, I think maybe that, that that was a shield bearer unit that was still there but um either way but there is still a unit there and it was surrounded by cavalry that was charging it from both sides so i i, I don't know and here i'm just desperately trying to get this last unit out of the way so it can focus on that one group that's going after my missile cavalry um Oh, and those are the shield bearers, which I guess are spearmen. So that, that I guess maybe that would explain why uh, my cavalry took so long to take them out. But even 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 though they are spearmen, I mean they're in loose from they're not in any formation right now. Like um, the spear, like historically was a um, it was like a group formation weapon, like. Uh, in melee, like like just loose formations, like the spear, like against cavalry, it would have done you more good than like a sword, but um, it, it was really best used in group formation. So like that, I, I feel like that charge probably should have done a little bit more damage. But then again, I am charging in with missile troops, and um, or no wait, those are my lancers. So I don't know. I, I mean, I guess my guys were also tired, so. But eventually, like, I charge in with these guys, and they, they shoot their last few arrows, and they just break and run. But it, it did take a lot of resources to take that one spear unit down, so. Um, yeah, I mean. So here, I'm think I'm kind of thinking, I still have a chance. Like, this battle is obviously extremely close. We're, we're both kind of down to the wires here. And, um, but... Unfortunately for me, a lot of his troops are still like pike units, and most of my troop, like except for that one ballista unit, like my guys are all cavalry without missiles. So that's not really a good situation. So here he's forming his guys up in a line, and I kind of figure, out, hey, I can just kind of ride around them, <laughs> and uh, it actually works a little bit. Um, and so I also charge my ballista guys in, try to. Uh, the idea there was some hem hammer anvil strikes so here I am um, charging in on the flank and 
again, that doesn't quite do as much as I had hoped it would, but um, no matter. I and so here he he realizes that I guess that his uh, line formation isn't great against my cavalry, so he's kind of turtling up, like kind of like I did in the last in the last um, battle. So, and I mean, against a pike turtle, there's really not much that cavalry can do. I kind of notice that he's doing it, so I break off my charge there. And so I charge my ballistas in there, uh, trying to kind of distract his um, pikemen that are kind of away from the little turtle triangle formation. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Like, eh. And so here I kind of figure that maybe if I charge, like, the corner... I'll be able to kind of get into the formation and disrupt it a little bit. Didn't quite work out that way. Um, so here I'm trying to get some hammer anvil strikes on that one unit that's kind of isolated. And here I just decide it's kind of all or nothing. I'm just going to charge all my guys in and hope for the best. And that unit charges in. And these guys charge right into their pike formation. Not good. Not good at all. Um, and so here he breaks up his formation. I still have one unit of cavalry in position to charge. So I, I figure, hey, I'm going to charge in. Hope for the best. He turns his guys around. And, um, yeah. <laughs> and so I here I figure... Uh, I, I do manage to break that one unit on the left. But here I figure, like, his guys are turned around fighting my guys, and his guys actually start to waver, so, man, is this close, <laughs> but my guys break, not enough of his guys break, the men are wavering. Th this is just close, it's probably one of the closest battles I've, I've fought in quite a while, and my guys there, like, they're not quite in a thick enough formation to do much charge damage at all, and he pulls out ahead. So congratulations to him. That was a hard-fought game. Um, that, that obviously could have gone either way. Honestly, the only thing I can think they could have done differently was maybe targeted his pike units a little bit sooner and gotten them out of the way. But, I mean, I was shooting at them for most of the game, so I, I don't know. I don't know. And so, yeah, um, this is just me, like, wrapping up. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already checked out Lionheart's channel, uh, I, I would highly recommend it. It's, uh, he has some good stuff up there, uh, good entertainment. And also, um, uh, remember to check out my videos. Um, I, I do several Let's Plays of Mountain Blade Warband and um, uh, Rome 2. And um, I'm also open to do other stuff. Um, so, yeah, just leave a comment. Uh, Remember, I do read the comments, and I enjoy reading the comments, so uh, don't be shy about leaving one of those. Also, remember, a like would uh, really help me out. I'm kind of a small channel trying to get started out. Um, so, yeah, any, uh, yeah, if you could just shoot me a like, that would be great. But also, any suggestions you guys might have about like what I could do, something for the microorganism shout-out, I always um, leave that open. And uh, just any comments in general about my channel. Uh, like maybe something you'd like to see or something I could do better. Just let me know. So see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.